Good morning, in fact a very early good morning from Cam. We're just heading out now on the new Azimut Grande 26 meter and this is a yacht that I've been dying to see for all sorts of reasons. But the headline news is this is Azimut's new 26 meter yacht. It's five cabins, can do around 26 knots and has some sensational design going on, not least managing to fit those five cabins into a 26 meter hull. So being able to get out on the water and see how she feels is gonna be a real treat. Have a look inside the uh, main salon of the 26 meter come through every one of these alberto mancini design boats we've had a look at and obviously azimut must take huge amounts of uh, congratulations for this as well the design is very organic unique it's fun it's sophisticated but there's always a few little things you just weren't expecting and i'll show you a couple now you've got these huge glass huge glass sections to each side so the view out through the stainless steel railings as you can see there is fantastic and you, know, you don't need a cutaway bulwark if you're going to put high quality stainless steel along the uh, along the sides of the decks of the boat so we've got freestanding furniture here as well which is a, again another real super yacht feature we're going to go past this dining area here azimut love quirky lights we saw some really fun ones on the uh, tri deck look at these they're sort of spidering down but we're going to come through now into the owner's stateroom this is spectacular for all sorts of reasons. Just talking about those quirky design details. If you come forward a second, how about this? I mean, the only reason for this to be here is because Azimut can put it there. And I love that. You know, most boats will have these deep glass sections and this boat does have a vast glass section, be amazing. But that's just a little work of genius and fun, I think. And it leads us through into the ensuite area. Four cabin layout below decks. And I think where Azimut have done really well is with these two double cabins here. So we have two symmetrical double cabins to port and starboard. All four cabins are en suite. They're good size en suites as well. And I actually really like the idea that they've given you a twin cabin, which is obviously much more kid friendly and three doubles. I'm sure there's also the option to have two twins and two doubles if you wanted to, but that's a good en suite. And these are all symmetrical. so. The port side cabin is going to be exactly the same as that. I've said it many times, but I just don't think anyone quite does this next generation yacht interior design and finish quite like Asimov. They're very confident with it. And to be fair, they've been doing it a lot longer than anyone else. And then we have two more guest cabins, both en suite. So Asimov have clearly had to work quite hard to fit this amount of volume into a 26 meter, 85, 86 foot boat. And one of the ways you can see where they've been working is to walk around the deck. So this is a flybridge boat, but there's only one access point to the flybridge, which is this one here. We're up here on the upper deck of the uh, 26 meter Grande. And the first thing that really strikes you is the, the amount of space. This deck just spreads right forward. It's a huge flybridge deck, but it has that upper deck motor yacht feel to it as well. Not only that, and I have counted, there is space for about 25 or 26 people on this amazing long spread of uh, seating that sort of includes these sort of wraparound fixed seating. We've got uh, freestanding furniture here and this great bar. As we're across the whole boat, there's detail everywhere you look. I'll show you some, some of the ideas, but it's worth looking at these beautiful sort of pebble-like freestanding seats here. And then as you move forward, we've got these washed teak bar chairs here, which are actually really handy because as you come up the stairs, it's actually quite useful to have something to grab as you, as you come up. Maybe a rail here would be useful, but actually these are really quite useful for all sorts of reasons. And then as we move up, we've got this bar. And something that Azimut are not scared to deal with at all is mixing materials. They do it so well. So we have the wash teak, we have the sort of oiled wood here. We have this metallic resin finish on here. And they come around here and we've got this big L-shaped bar. We have this dining area. Eight to 10 people will be able to spread out on this boat beautifully. And if we're just talking about the 10 people that can sleep on board, there's masses of space up on this upper deck. So we've got these two side decks, which are a good side, a really lovely stainless steel railings down each side. 
but you've got access to the fore deck on both sides. Sometimes on, on this side of the boat, you've got a working deck this side and then stairs up to the fore deck on the other. But both sides will take you forward. That's very useful for the crew and just generally to help you access the boat. We'll go forward. We've got a big side door here taking you inside. So that's again useful for crew and guests. Guests can access the main salon. Crew and captain can access the inner helm and importantly the day head opposite. Okay, so now we're up onto the fore deck. We've got fender storage under here, an easy walk through around this fore deck lounge. This area that you're looking at here, this raised up sort of coach roof section, that's what's giving you the headroom for that owner's cabin below. So effectively standing above the owner's cabin that we looked at earlier. And then we're gonna come all the way down. Now we're standing in this sort of fore deck well. So this is a working area, this is where you've got your windlass, your anchor equipment, You've got more storage under here. And again, you can walk all the way around and back down the port side. And that's what we're going to do now. As we come down, we've got another side door here. So we've got twin stairwells. We've got twin doors. So again, crew access, guest access, excellent. The crew quarters are just through there. The galley is just through there, which means that the crew can operate around the shop without having to go to go through the deck salon. So they can get food up to the upper deck or whatever they need to get up there, and they don't have to go through the yacht. So privacy, ease of movement, excellent. We've got these great overhangs. We've got this sort of lip coming down, so you really feel very safe in the boat. We've got these open rails coming up here, which allow that fantastic view, but it feels so safe. But also, this is proper super yacht level feel here. You know, the overhang, the stainless steel, the width of the teak deck. So we're about to put the new 26 meter Grande through its paces. This particular boat comes with the 1,650 horsepower engines. So we'll see what sort of speeds we're gonna get, see how she handles. Like I say, this is a high volume boat, five cabins. So really interested to see how she handles. So we'll just take her up gently up onto the plane. I have been seeing our skipper here driving the boat and uh, she seems to be handling very, very well. So we're just going to take her up. We think about 1900 RPM, 22 knots. It feels really comfortable. So we're going to, we're going to head there first. For more long distance cruising, the hull on this is very versatile. And we're looking at some pretty serious range at around 10 to 12 knots. But we're just coming up to that sweet spot now at about 1900 RPM and we'll just let the speed catch up. So we're doing about 21, 22 knots now, almost dead on 1900 RPM. And we're burning around 200 liters an hour on each engine. This feels very, very comfortable. So we're just going along at 22 knots now. If you ask me, I'd say we're going at 15. It is very smooth. And I'm just gonna go round to starboard, just see how that feels. And I want to see how much speed we're going to lose. And the answer is very little. We're still going along at 20 knots. And I'm just going to come round to port. We're just going to push up to maximum RPM because, as I said, this boat is bigger, heavier, and has a lot more volume than the outgoing 25 meter. But I also understand it's faster with the same engines or even smaller engines. I say we have the larger engines, so I'm just gonna take the revs up to maximum now, around 2350 RPM. And I can tell you categorically that this boat is doing 30 knots, which is faster than anyone would have hoped. We're registering 30, 30.3. with the 1650 horsepower engine. So that is four or five knots faster than the 25. So here we have a bigger boat, a more voluminous boat, a heavier boat with the same size engines as its outgoing 25 meter sister and it's going faster. That's some seriously good hull design. The Grande 26 is the first model to employ Azimut's unique large pod 4600 drive unit designed in collaboration with ZF. 
This R-facing directional pod massively increases the horsepower currently available for this drive type with up to 1650 horsepower for each pod. It's also hybrid ready, so it can be coupled to an electric motor in the future. We fully expect to see more of these drives across the range and quite possibly even more powerful applications. Many thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so we've just had a drive up on the flybridge boat handled really well and importantly went faster than we actually thought. As the motor quoting around 28 knots, we were getting 30 knots on two runs with and against the tide, no problem at all. But Azimut probably playing it safe because once this boat has all its owner's equipment on board, a bit of hull growth and what have you, 28 knots is probably quite a good estimate. This boat is stabilized with a, with a gyroscopic Seakeeper stabilizer. So that would explain, she does feel very, very stable on the water. But also the thing that really got me was going into the turns, you know, it's very smooth and very constant up to that 30 knot top speed. She feels very, very smooth through the water. I really like the way she goes into the turns, but it is that, the way she cuts through the waves that is probably going to be the thing that stays with me most having driven. Back to where we are, so we're now in the inner helm, the wheelhouse if you like. Any meaningful long cruising, this is where you'll be, night passages, all that kind of thing. So what have we got? We've got triple multifunction displays. We've actually got an excellent view forward through this screen. Been on a few of these boats and sometimes the screen just feels a little bit too shallow. This one, they've got it absolutely bang on. The view forward is fantastic. You know, I can see the, the crew over at the front. There's a little uh, backrest there lifted up, but it's, the visibility is good all around. And also they push these windows back, if you can just see here. That back so if i'm down here and i want to i can see a good way down that port side and the starboard side so a very useful helm there's only one one seat here for the for the captain let's say this really is a long distance cruising option or indeed if you're just having a lazy day the skipper can put himself here trundle along at eight to ten knots and guests can enjoy the rest of the boat in complete safety smoothness and stability and just while we're panning across here we've got really clear display so you can see how fast you're going what the revs are how much fuel you're burning you know it's it's all there for you one of the things i'm really pleased to see that azimut is doing and frankly not enough yacht builders are doing this is actually giving the skipper the captain the owner a decent helm seat let's have a look at this one for a second so we've got a bolster here which means you can stand up and lean back if you if you wish but then we've also got a foot rest here that folds down so when you're sitting you've got some support for your legs but most importantly you've got the ability to adjust the seat i mean cars have only been doing this for about 60 years and that's so important because so i hear human beings can be different sizes so this seat will adapt to that human being i don't know why the people aren't doing more of this but they're not but well done as a we are now in the incredibly discreet galley area, it's so discreet in fact, I walked past it a few times without even knowing it was here. There's an enclosed door, it is very quiet, very serene in here, everything's clean as you would imagine, they've worked in as much storage as they can. Not the biggest galley in the world, I'll be honest with you, but it's a good galley, as I said, lots of storage. We've got cold storage here, massive freezer tray under here, you can see how deep that goes and lots of drawers and what have you, might sit in there later. But importantly, as I was showing you before, we've also got this side access, which means the crew, the cook, the crew, can get out here, service the boat, come back in, really useful. And we have the crew quarters down here. So it's gonna be very private for the crew, very easy for them to move around without interrupting the guests. Like I say, storage is king. We've got a fair bit of workspace here. We've got a serving hatch going through into the dining area there storage up here but this is i'm very impressed with behind here making the use of every square bit we have specialist storage in in here and that's perfectly placed and of course they're pushed because they want a big main salon they want that owner's stateroom this so this was always going to be one area that was under pressure but it's very good and very workable and very clean so we looked at the galley we've got the lower helm just up here and now what we're going to do is we're going to go down this stairwell into the crew quarters actually the first time I've been into the, the crew quarters and the first thing that strikes me is how well Azimut have done to fit this mess area in. So important, you know, it's so important for the crew to have a place where they can just come and sit, eat, relax. 
out of the way of the guests and have some privacy. So we've got storage all the way around here. We've got a microwave. Bear in mind that the galley is just up the stairs here. So the crew will be using that to fix their own food and what have you. We've got a really good size toilet compartment. Often this is an overlooked area, but there's a proper shower cubicle in there. It's a good toilet compartment. And then we have two bunked cabins here. It's a good size, but it's that mess area that really impresses, plus all the storage. And then we have actually, this is more of a captain's cabin in here. So you've got like a sort of oversized single bed in here. So it's space for, for three crew. And given this is a five cabin boat, but only at 26 meters, that seems about right. And then just behind us down here, we've got the utility area. So there's a lot going on down here. And I think Asimov have given just enough space to make this, you know, a functional, practical crew quarters. So how do we feel about this? new Azimut Grande, this 26 meter option. Well, the first thing to say is it is bigger than the outgoing 25 meter, but it's not so much a replacement for the 25 meter. It's a completely different boat. In fact, Azimut could keep the 25 meter in this boat running alongside each other because they are that different. Highlights for me, apart from the wonderfully quirky, fun, sophisticated design, these organic shapes, the glass, highlights is gonna be how well that five cabin layout works and just the general feeling of space, this flow through the boat. I think it's a beautifully enjoyable boat to get on board. Yes, okay, there's only one access to the flybridge, but it's so easy to move around the boat. I don't think you're gonna mind. And like I say, a, a, a lovely surprise, the boat's doing 30 knots. So I couldn't be more impressed, to be honest with you. And I strongly suggest if you get a chance to have a look on board because it is something different. Azimut are doing something very special with its yachts at the moment, particularly with uh, Alberto Mantini and particularly on this Grande range. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps. We want to get access to these boats and show you as many of them as we can. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.